In this video, we're going to be talking about a real business analysis project example. Um, for this specific example, I'm going to be talking about a project I was on where we implemented um, order history tracking in our current customer portal. For this example, I'll talk about a project where we built the ability to track orders. Basically, the company I work for uh, ran a business to business direct sales model for a very long time, meaning that the relationship um, our customers had with us was usually handled by an, an account manager or a salesperson or account exec of some kind. So anytime a customer wanted any specific information about say like an order to maybe marry it up to their own information, they would literally just call their account manager um, or email them and then that account manager would provide them provide them that information. And basically what we were doing was building a, a, a place for those customers to be able to log in and get to that information themselves. So those account managers, salespeople, account execs, can spend more time doing other things like you know selling stuff right from the outset i knew this project was going to be heavy on data because we weren't really changing a process per se we were really just exposing information that we already had to an external customer the first thing i did in my analysis was reach out to the order management team and essentially just request an output of all the fields that fields that were available in the order management system I learned that for orders, there are really two levels on an order. There's the header level information, and this is the more static information that doesn't really change um, once you place the order. Think things like the customer name, the date that the order was placed, or kind of that snapshot of um, when the order was placed. Then it's the line level items. The line level items are a little bit more dynamic because as uh, an order is being progressed through kind of its manufacturing process, all the lines have different levels of completenesses and statuses and things could be shipped. Um, individual lines could be shipped. So there's a lot more things that change in terms of status at a line level, um, but at a header level, almost nothing really changes other than the entire order being essentially complete. What I found out in doing my analysis of all these um, fields was that there are a ton of attributes, both at a header level and a line level, which were relevant to different processes like servicing, manufacturing, shipping, etc. cetera. Um, that may or may not make sense to the customer. So what I did was built out a giant Excel sheet, um, one sheet for the header level attributes, one sheet for the line level attributes. Um, I worked with subject matter experts from all the different parts of the process to define each attribute to define each attribute, understanding what it's for, how it changes, and whether it's important to the customer. You would think that such a task would be straightforward and simple, but it was not. My organization serves several lines of business. Each of those lines of business has its own customizations and order types, yet they all go into the same order management system. A simple example of how this complicated things could be the, the purchase order field. Um, which is intended to be a place um, for our customers to put in a reference number. Ideally, a reference number from maybe their systems whenever they're keeping track of their different orders. Some customers use the field as intended with their own internal reference number. Some customers um, use it to put the name of the purchaser. Um, some used it to put in maybe additional order details. Um, and some customers that didn't use the fields at all for those lines of business, since it was a blank field, they used it for something internal to us that meant nothing to the customer. Basically, it came down to which attributes do we need the system to consume in order to be able to categorize the order? Um, which order types should we show to the customer? Uh, which attributes do we need to consume to be able to categorize the order lines? Um, and then which order lines do we show to the customer? And then even within those order lines, which specific attributes do we show the customer? Getting to that meant understanding which customer types and groups could and should use our new functionality. Another important step for us was non-functional requirements, notably performance and usability. Our ERP system has millions of orders that can have hundreds of lines, uh, meaning a customer running searches could potentially have to wait a very long time. Uh, the other issue was that some information was more dynamic, meaning that it, it really does need to be real time to be valuable to the customer. At this point, we had to determine what level of information, what subset of information did we want to index for fast and easy uh, reference and searchability. Ultimately, we decided to schedule a job that uh, would store and index header level information in our own databases um, to allow for faster searching of the orders themselves without having to like go out to the ERP system and, and search. And we only 
held a certain subset of information basically um, for an amount of years. So it wasn't all the orders in the entire ERP system. Um, and as mentioned, that header level information rarely changed. So by storing it, uh, we were fairly sure that it was the accurate information um, and, and the information was only ever going to be more than uh, an hour old. Um, so, you know, within an hour, not a lot of things are going to change at an order header level. Um, and then once that order was kind of brought up to the customer, then we called to get real time data for the order lines to make sure that it was timely and they were getting the most value um, from that information. This structure had some limitations. Obviously, you could only search based off of header level information. So if you wanted to search based off of like, let's say like a product that was on your order, you wouldn't really be able to do that. And there was, you know, some discussion, some back and forth about architecture and all of that to determine, you know, what would be the best MVP? What could we get away with and still deliver value to the customer? And ultimately, we decided that just having that header level information should be enough to get the customer what they want. And if we wanted to pursue a more robust system, we would do it, do that in the future. But for now, that was a good minimum viable product. Once the application was built and we started seeing that data come in and we started looking through those orders, what we learned was some lines of business keep their data much more clean than others. So after we had already kind of built the system, uh, we kind of ended up with more uh, requirements to essentially be able to hide and show certain levels of information depending on the customer type. Um, so those so those customer or industry groups could kind of sanitize their information, clean it up and fix their processes that kind of populated this information so they could be sure that the information was accurate and we, and we weren't causing more problems for our customer um, than the value that we were creating for that customer. That project is now several years old. Many customers have been onboarded into using that um, order history tracking feature. Um, and because of it, because we've exposed that data to our customers, our internal processes also got cleaned up, data got more clean, and overall it ended up being a, a big success uh, for our company in terms of saving money and time um, for our own internal resources to be doing other things. I hope you found that helpful. Um, if you like hearing about these project examples, let me know in the comments, give me a thumbs up, um, and I'll make more videos talking about more examples. And of course, if you have questions about anything related to business analysis, let me know in the comments. I'll either answer you there or make a whole new video. Um, so subscribe to see those questions get answered. And thanks for watching.